Micah Frankel for CageMinds.com. We're here with the hard hidden hillbilly, Kevin Kroom. What's up, what's up, what's up, y'all? MFC40 Crown Kings coming up May 9th. And news recently just broke. No longer a title fight. Instead, Jesse Brock, a title eliminator, is what MFC is labeling it as. So, how do you feel about the late switch? Uh, so, as far as opponent goes, like, whatever, you know, um, I plan on beating anybody, anyone puts in front of me anyway, so, I mean, whatever, you know, uh, that's, that's not such a huge deal. L little, uh, little upset about the whole belt and everything, only because that's, that's why I signed up to fight for them. They, uh, they hit me up and was like, hey, we want you to come take our belt. And so, I was like, cool. <laughs> I'll come fight for your belt, you know. Uh, I mean, so that's cool. But I mean, whatever, you know. Uh, we have we have our eyes set on higher goals, you know. So I'm just gonna go in there, get to work like every other day, and then uh, you know, move on from there. Brock is more of a veteran of the scene. So, what does that do to this change up your mentality going into the fight? Uh. I mean, so it doesn't really change my mentality at all. I think uh, I I always have the same mentality, going there to win, win quickly if possible. Um, but um, it changes it changes up a little bit, man. I think uh, I think Burchek had had a little bit better hands and uh, was more athletic, um, whereas Brock is probably a little bit tougher. Uh, and I mean, he's definitely definitely by far fought the tougher opponents. Over over Burchek, uh, you know, and then um, so so I'd say I'd say Brock's a little bit tougher and, and probably maybe a little better wrestler. Um, got a bigger head too, so he'd probably take a better punch. But uh, you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's all the same, man. I, I'm I'm gonna go in there. It doesn't really affect the way we've been training for this fight, so it's like not a big deal, you know. Do you think we know besides the belt? Does it really affect? Where you go after this, going that it's from Burshak, who is kind of, you know, also like yourself on that next level radar. And Brock's kind of more veteran stuck at where he is almost because he's got about a 500 record. Yeah. Um, so my coach just informed me yesterday it was a better than 500 record. We're not good at math, but we figured that one out. <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> it's an inside joke. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> um... So, not really, man. Uh, you know, I'm going to go out there uh, and, and do do what I was planning on doing. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, I mean, at this point, we're, we're at the next level. So, it's just kind of like win and we're there, you know. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go out and do, do the same thing. And, and I mean... Whatever, whatever happens, gonna happen. It's it's my time for sure. It's it's all about to happen. Well, it's your time. There's a big winning streak, but it's a confusing winning streak. So let's go over the numbers again for everybody that's trying to keep up with it because I have trouble with it myself. <laughs> okay, so I have won ten fights in a row. Nine of them were MMA, and then uh, one of them was is like a new hybrid uh, kickboxing kickboxing sport. Uh, or whatever. Uh, it started out, they immediately, like, right after the fight, they put it on my MMA record. So we had just been being like, oh, yeah, but, you know, ten, ten fights in a row. Uh, and then I had an interview for my last fight, and uh, I, like, mentioned that. I was like, hey, you know, it's actually it was actually kind of a kickboxing fight. That's why I couldn't, couldn't finish, is what I said. And then, um, and then, like, the next week, I looked on my record, and they took it off. I'm like, what? I guess people are listening to me. <laughs> So, 9 fight MMA winning streak, 10 fight overall. Yeah. So now we got that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that last fight. It was Titan. It was Brian Goldsby, and that was a tough fight. Heck yeah, man. It was, uh, it was a real tough fight. Uh, Brian Goldsby is super legit, man. Look at his record. He's, he's, fought, uh, he's fought a lot of tough people, you know. Um, and we knew the whole, the whole camp, the whole time that... Uh, that he was gonna be really tough. That he wasn't gonna give me the victory. You know, like I wasn't just gonna be able to go out there and just take it. You know, like he he was gonna make me fight for it. Um, so we knew that going into it. Uh, he kind of he kind of surprised me right out the gate. Uh, all of the footage we'd watched on him had been a couple years old, and uh, 
he had really put a lot of work into his hands since then. Uh, he came out uh, throwing straight punches, which which we hadn't ever seen in any of the video. Uh, and then immediately, you know, uh, immediately I got put on my back, which normally doesn't happen. You know, uh, I've maybe been on my back like three times in, in you know, an overall of 40 fights. So, you know, I'm, I'm not there a whole bunch. Uh, and it just immediately right out the gate, like it, it kind of just threw me off a little bit, and then uh, you start getting tired. The cut was the cut was really hard, um, so it's cool that uh, a lot of times, a lot of times you have to lose to to get better and learn a lot of lessons. And uh, I learned a lot of lessons, and I still got the W. So uh, I'm really happy about that. And uh, it, it made me a ten times better fighter. So it's like I'm happy I got that one out of the way. I'm happy I learned a f you know, those lessons that I needed to learn to make me a better fighter. And I'm happy that I can move on, and I still got the, the win streak going on. It's pretty nice. So what's it like to also find out more about your chin? Because another higher level fighter like that, and you took... Took some good shots right there. Yeah, um, yeah, man. I mean, so I've never been knocked out until I started as a pro uh, fighter, and I've been hit with just about anything you can think of, <laughs> you know, in in my previous fighting years. So it came to the point where I didn't even think I could get knocked out, you know. And then a couple people <laughs> made me realize you can get knocked out buddy uh so i mean yeah i've always i've always been pretty confident in my chin uh so i mean yeah but i mean it, it's always good to to show people hey uh you know with with uh out of those nine nine wins should i have seven first round finishes so i mean it's nice to show people hey like not only can I finish quickly, but I can I can drag the whole thing out. I can I can overcome adversity. He was putting the heat on me. You know he like I say he didn't make it easy for me. Um, I think I it came down to the wire. I took him down within like the last 13 seconds of the third round, and and in my mind that sealed the fight. And I'm pretty sure in the judges and everybody else. So like literally came down to the wire. I had to fight the entire 15 minutes. It was rough. Uh, and so I mean that that's just. It it shows my versatility, and it shows that uh, I can go out there, I can get punched in the face, and I can still, at some point, keep it together, you know? It's a tough fight. What's it like for you? You felt that you won, but are there thoughts going through your head? Well, I hope the judges saw it my way. What's it like when you're waiting for that decision, and it's been a tough, close fight? You felt you won, but then you got to think, well, did these other three people feel the same way? Yeah, uh, I certainly don't like to leave it up to the judges. Uh, um, I've, I've definitely been in that situation before, and my corners were like giving me the nod, like good job. The crowd was giving me the nod, and then they gave it to the other guy, and I was like, you know. So uh, I've been there before, and yes, I was super confident, super confident. But still, like I looked at Coach Latron, I was like, I won that fight, right? Like you know, like please, like. And then, uh, yeah, it, he he paused for a second. He was like, and the winner is in the red corner. I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, man. It's it's nice to uh, to come come through that because, man, it is scary. You know, you just put it all on the line, uh, and it sucks to have. And I mean, shoot, I wouldn't want to be a judge either. You know what I'm saying? Because some fights are just ridiculous, you know, to, to have to judge. So that's just a hard position, and I would prefer never to leave it to the judges again. So, so it's the exact moment like when he's like, and the winner is, and you're like, really, man? Is this yeah. a bad TV he like, show? He like Hurry up to, and say it. <laughs> right, he like had to figure out which corner they is instead of just saying my name. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you got like the pit in your stomach, and you're just like, Hold your breath. Uh, and then, oh, finally, you know, like, it was, it was rough. It was rough, but, man, it was good. Hey, I'm just going to say it. Stefan Bonner's kind of a dick, too. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I've watched that interview a few times. It's okay. Whatever, man. <laughs> so, with that, what are you going to do in this next fight to come out successful May 9th? Uh, so... 
Man, I mean, uh, I've had I've had a great training camp. I, I really do think uh, I'm at the top of my game. I've never been in as good a shape. I, I've been getting ready for a five-round title fight. Just found out that it's three rounds. So, I mean, uh, you know, I have a great gas tank at the moment. I think I'm really on point with my hands, my takedown defense, my takedowns. Um, you know, so I'm really excited and, and really... <clears throat> All I have to do is show up, man. I'm just going to show up and, and do what I do every day, you know. Uh, and and I, think, I think that'll be enough. Where do you have to be most aware of Jesse Brock's game? Uh, I mean, so he definitely wants to take it to the ground. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, once he gets on top, he has a, a pretty legit top game. And he's not going to let me up, you know. So, I mean, most definitely I, I'm going to be watching the takedowns. He's 5'4". So, um, you know, I mean, I think, I think I'll be able to keep him out and move. Uh, a lot of movement. So, we'll see. Just in case he does get you down, how much of a different scenario is this having to work on getting up, being that you can't cage walk? It's a ring. Yeah, um, so, man, I hate the cage. I hate, <laughs> I hate doing cage get-ups. Uh, I would prefer to get a little space and scramble. You know, I mean, that, that, that's what I really like to do. That's what I'm really good at. I'm a good scrambler, uh, so I don't think it hurts me at all, personally, um, really. Can't wait for the fight. What do you? What is your prediction for the fight? Um, I mean, I, I would definitely see a late first round or a second round finish um, via me <laughs> winning <laughs> the fight. Uh, but you know, uh, whatever. Like I said, this kid's incredibly tough. Uh, I got the last minute opponent switch. I'm not overlooking him. I do not care what's in the future for me right now. All that matters right now is May 9th. I'm going to show up. I'm going to make my weight. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to fight my heart out. And we'll see what happens. I know we got some great sponsors, coaches, teammates, all these people. Who do you think? Shout out to. Heck yeah. Uh, so I need to shout out uh, Latrell's MMA and Fitness. Cage Minds for hooking me up. Um, I need to holler at Ray Yee and Albuquerque Kickboxing, Mama D's and Mama D's Dungeon, Danny Romero, the Romero Hideout, um, Gary Albuquerque Drive Shaft, which is where we are doing this interview right here. Uh, he's a great man. He hooks me up. Uh, Pro Nutrition, Hillbilly Fightwear, Bell to Bell Impact, um, Heart of America Athletic Training Center, and um, ProTax. Uh, and you know, I mean, I think I think that's pretty much it. So uh, that and all, all my teammates, everybody who helped me out, I really I really appreciate you making me better. Um, yep, I, I think that's good, man. Uh, thank you, everybody. I uh, appreciate all the all the viewage and all the all the support. So uh, I'm gonna go out there and do you guys proud. Thanks. Anything else for the fans? Nah, man. Watch May 9th live AXS TV, and uh, it's gonna go down for sure. Thank you for the time. Heck yeah, thank you.